name is Tilda, and I'm here to tell the story of how I shipped expanded gender options at Pinterest. So, a couple of things I'm going to cover. Why gender options beyond female and male matter. How we designed this feature and used data to measure it. And the most important things that I learned. So, gender forms. <laughs> This point has already been pretty well covered today, but every time I, you know, I'm filling out a form and I see the binary of male and female, a lot of feelings come into my head, a lot of thoughts. I'm like, why? Why do you need that information? Probably the product that you work on already has gender built into it, and there are a couple reasons why companies tend to do this. There's legal or medical reasons, there's pronoun or social reasons, and there's marketing or demographic reasons. I'm not saying those are good, I'm just saying that's generally why <laughs> gender gets a digital product. When I signed up for Pinterest the first time, way before I ever worked there, I noticed we had these, you know, the fun radio buttons that reinforce the gender binary. Little did I know that a while later, I would actually be in a position to fix that. So, <laughs> Pinterest is my first engineering job. Before that, I got a degree in gender studies and worked in human resources. But then I got tired of performing emotional labor on behalf of a corporation, <laughs> so I quit. I learned to code and landed at Pinterest. I was shit terrified, <laughs> had no idea what I was doing, and was basically convinced that I was going to be fired at any moment, but I didn't let that fear stop me, or I worked through it, and haven't been fired yet, so yay. <laughs> About a year passed, and I started to feel more confident. Not just in my technical skills, but in my interpersonal understanding of how people actually work together to ship products and kind of the organizational politics that were going on above my head. So, being the stirring it up sort of person that I am, I started some conversations and I was like, why? Why have we considered supporting, you know, options beyond male and female in our product? I wouldn't say the response that I got was great. People either didn't understand why this is important, or they said, you know, let's focus on the things that are going to move our core metrics. It's not that I ever thought that expanded gender options were going to increase our metrics. It's just that if we wanted Pinterest to be for everybody, it's the right thing to do. So you should just build it. Yeah. I realized that nobody else was going to build this for me. If I wanted this to exist, I had to, take the, I had to take charge. I knew that I had the social understanding to build it in an empathetic and aware way, and I was pretty sure that I had the technical know-how to figure out. I also realized that I could, le I could leverage the sort of lack of co-ownership, which was a problem across the organization. <laughs> Gender needs to be represented by a string, so you can put 
anything you want in there, including emoji. Just <laughs> stop hiring. So, after I did the back end changes, did the middleware changes, did the API changes, and then I made the front end ch changes to add gender to the settings page, or expanded gender options rather. Politically speaking, it's pretty easy to add things to the settings page because no one gives a shit. <laughs> it's like the junk drawer of any application. <laughs> a curious thing happened that I wasn't really expecting, which is that when I started building this, people were really supportive. Other people at Pinterest were like, hey, what can I do to help you? So I was like, well... It sure would be great if we had support for this on iOS and Android as well. And was able to shoulder tap other people into building that, which was really great. And then also get some support for V2 as well, building a web version. Because gender on the settings page is really great, but it didn't solve the initial issue of I don't want people to have to put in a binary gender on site up. So I decided that's what I was going to tackle next. I knew we'd need a little bit more of a data-driven approach here because unlike the settings page, your, um, your sign-up page is pretty prime real estate and it impacts a ton of top-line business metrics. So here are some design iterations we went through on our way to shipping this feature. First thing we tried was adding another radio button that said custom. When a user selected the custom button, a text box would pop in beneath where they could enter their custom gender value. Now the problem with this form was the sign-up code was reused in a bunch of places that had different styling. One of the sign-up forms was like this really skinny, narrow little modal. Pinterest is also translated into 33 languages, so you need to account for about 30% more horizontal space when you're localizing into longer languages such as French and German. So, the third radio button didn't fit in the skinny modal in French and German. We could have just, you know, made the skinny modal wider, but I knew I wouldn't have a lot of time for maintenance of this feature, so I wanted to make my code as robust and not hacky as possible. Sorry, I'm getting real dry up here. <laughs> I asked a designer friend for help. His suggestion was to use the symbols instead of words that would fit the form better. There are some problems with this approach. Number one, there is no universal symbol that represents everybody who doesn't identify as male or female. <laughs> so maybe the principle. <laughs> cross-culturally. Not so fun fact, in Russia anything that could be considered LGBT propaganda is illegal, so a symbol, a symbol to represent non-binary people could be considered illegal under that law. And number three, a lot of people are just plain confused about which symbol means male and which symbol means female, so <laughs> this wasn't going to work for anybody. Okay, fine. Back to the radio button, I'll just do the hacky thing, make the modal wider. But, nope, I was blocked. So the person who was in charge of the team that owned the sign-up metrics felt very strongly that there would be a really negative sentiment about this. My metrics would drop and general chaos would rule. I disagreed with this person, but I didn't really have any power to do anything about it. He wouldn't even let me release it as an A-B experiment. For a while, the project stalled. I was frustrated. I didn't really know what to do. But then, in the way of tech organizations, there was a reorg. <laughs> Standards. <laughs> it's a pretty hard problem, right? Like, how do you?
do you make a feature, how do you design a feature that's visible to the small minority of users who really care about it, but not so visible that the majority who might not understand will see it and get mad? <laughs> what we came up with was this little info icon. So when a user hovers over the info icon, it pops up a tooltip that tells you why we're asking for this information in the first place, and then allows you to enter your custom gender value. When you hit save, we replace male or female with the text that you typed in. We released this as an A-B experiment hoping to prove the null hypothesis. That is, hoping to prove that this feature would have no negative impact on our metrics at all. Unfortunately, that wasn't what happened. Signups were down about 1%, so it was back to the drawing board. I hypothesized that maybe users were unintentionally triggering the hover interaction and getting confused, but if we change it to a click interaction, that wouldn't happen. So we ran the same experiment as a click interaction, and signups were flat, which is what we wanted. So we shipped it. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> made sure that people were actually finding the part where they could put in their, um, their gender before we shipped it, because that's really important too. Then we took things even a step further. I was approached by a designer on the mobile team and she said, hey, I'm redoing the whole flow. Can we just put custom gender in there with the other options? Like, why is it so hidden? And I said, you're not going to get any argument from me about that. <laughs> We ran an experiment around this too, of course. It's not exactly an apples to apples comparison because the new flow is visually very different. But metrics are better in the new flow, so we shifted. <coughs> Quantitative metrics never tell the whole story of a feature, so we did user research around this as well. But sentiment was positive about expanded gender options. People said things like, Custom gender is an awesome idea for our progressive social climate. <laughs> we got love on social media too. But this whole, the whole project kind of got me thinking and I was like, why? Why is this so important to me? And I thought I was building this feature as ally work, but I realized there was something deeper going on with me. <laughs> Any of you have seen the movie, but I'm a cheerleader, raise your hand. Alright, great. So for those of you who haven't seen it, in this movie, Megan, the main character, is in a like support group-like environment, we'll call it, and she has an epiphany. She realizes that not everyone struggles with same-sex attraction. She's different. She's a lesbian. Over the course of building this feature, I, I realized that, you know, the majority of the world is comfortable putting themselves into the box of just male or just female, but I'm different. I'm non-binary. What does that mean to me? Still figuring that out. <laughs> so, my biggest takeaways, number one, you can leverage the chaos that will inevitably be present in your organization to advance your social justice warrior agenda. <laughs> Number two, once you get the ball rolling, people will want to help. They want to be on the right side of history. And number three, the process of building software, making things, teaches you about yourself in ways that you might not expect. Thank you.